hate to interrupt the conversation. I feel like it's really going somewhere. I feel like everybody's meeting someone new. Raise your hand if you met one new person here tonight. Yes. Yes. Raise your hand if you've met two new people here tonight. I always wanted to be a teacher and just say that. I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You don't win a prize or anything like that. But I do want to remind you that if you do win a prize, Diamond Hunt, $5. It's an awesome prize. So we want to thank some of our sponsors that helped make tonight possible. Uh, Bruce Westfall from Great Frame Up for the Easels. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> also, Dan Rollings from uh, Enter Design for the Easels as well. Give him a round of applause. And now for one of the moments you've all been waiting for, Mr. Jonathan Scott. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Nobody's been waiting for this. <laughs> uh, everyone's been waiting for this. Uh, so now, as we look at some of your, your, your artwork, um, it, there's a, a kind of tone of almost industrial, uh, uh, one could even say maybe abandonment, uh, but that raw, natural beauty. How would you describe your work? Uh, I, I think I deal with... Uh, the conflict between man and nature, mm -hmm. um, and I think for for the works that are in the, the lobby here, uh, you can see nature taking back what man has put or taken away from it. Mm -hmm. And I think I flipped uh, for the Manufactured Horizon series. I sort of flipped that on its head and uh, worked instead of showing what is there, showing it there should be a sense of uh, like absence uh, or longing. With that, with that series. Now, how did you come up with the title "Manufactured"? And when you think of it, I mean, it's kind of—I it, would assume that there are some pretty deep meanings there. there yeah, there's multiple layers of, of meaning. Um, one, obviously, is is this conflict between uh, what would be there naturally if you, if you read the artist statement. I think it's in the programs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Indiana was mostly woodland before man came here, and now we we look around and we think when we're out in the country, out in the you know nature. <laughs> it's not necessarily nature, um, and then obviously the the print uh, that you have on aluminum. Mm -hmm. Aluminum is a is a very much man made material. Uh, you, aluminum doesn't occur naturally; it has to be made, and and that's that's the same way with these these landscapes. They they don't occur truly naturally. They they're created, whether or not we're conscious of it or not. Okay, whether or not we're conscious of it or not. Now. I would imagine that you were very conscious going into some of these spaces and, and selecting some of the particular setups that you chose to photograph, but what is that process like? How do you uh, scout your locations? What presents to you the best kind of location to shoot in? Uh, word of mouth is usually how I find out about places. Uh, I have a strict uh, enter but don't break policy, okay. so I will jump the fence, jump but the I fence. won't break it. Uh, <laughs> um, as far as when I come upon the places, it's really just walking around and, and spending a lot of time. Often I'll spend a whole day within a certain structure, and as the lighting changes, I mean, if the lighting is one way in the morning and one way in the afternoon, and yet again a different way as it's setting, it's a, it sets the scene for a completely different uh, environment. So um, now, are you bringing lighting with you? Or are you? It no. is purely how it appears. All in of this is purely, and that, that's the other thing. These are purely man-made structures, yet. It's all natural lighting. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of natural light, like walls will fall down and roofs will cave in. And at that point, you have light now where uh, the people who built the building probably never expected it. Right. Now, have you ever been in a space where that's maybe not particularly safe? Maybe they're based I would say all of these are not safe. Really? Yeah. So are, do you have like a disclaimer, like, don't try this at home? Yeah, don't try website. this at home. <laughs> no, no, no disclaimers, but uh, yeah, don't try that at home. No, it's it's not it's not. I, I, uh, as of late, I've been more conscious of the uh, the danger as aspect, and I don't know. It's just something. It's a risk you have to take, I guess. It, for art, man, for art. Now, w how did you start in this uh, photography? I mean, this is a very specific style of mm -hmm. shooting. Uh, did you start doing portraits, or you know, sometimes people do like a landscape, that kind of thing, and then they move into? I started sh shooting uh, landscapes. I think I took my first picture in Colorado when I was, I don't know, really young. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was all nature for a while, and then it definitely turned to landscapes, and then eventually I. Uh, uh, probably influenced by one of my mentors here, Jenny Taylor Rosner, who's another photographer. Mm -hmm. She uh, has worked in abandoned structures for a while too, and 
uh, I think somewhere along the way, sort of almost unconsciously, subconsciously, mm -hmm. uh, her work and approach uh, influenced me. Now, speaking about your influences, uh, Ms. Rosner, uh, are there any other particular uh, artists, photographers, uh, musicians that kind of inspire your work? I is think there someone that you're playing when you're, you know, taking photos in the background? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, I never am listening to music when I'm in the building and structure itself. That's interesting, because I always have to have music playing in a photo shoot. <laughs> really? Otherwise, I, don't, I have no idea what to do. No idea what to do. Well, I don't know. It's, it's uh, for me, I, I work pretty organically. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you, you had mentioned earlier in, the, in this, you said setups. Uh, I don't ever touch anything when I go in. Um, okay. I don't rearrange, I don't adjust. Uh, I, if in some way, if nothing else than to myself, it's it's a matter of honesty. Because mm -hmm. uh, I could either... picture you being in one of these spaces, like with a, like maybe a, an old library or something like that, and you just take the books and you're like, ah, no, this no, is no. more dramatic. No, no, <laughs> nature will do that on its own. Okay, wind, wind will take care of throwing stuff. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Now, are there any? Is there any alterations to, uh, or are any like, a, what they call it photoshopping? Uh, to the pictures, are you? Are, uh, uh, I'm pretty strict. Or is that like a magi asking a magician how they did that trick? No, no. Uh, you know, you never know. You want to ask. Right? <laughs> uh, the the photos here in the lobby are, uh, I, I stick pretty closely to anything that you could do in a, a normal dark room, a, a film dark room. Mm -hmm. I'll do adjust contrast, burn, dodge, that sort of thing. Uh, past that, as far as photoshopping, to enhance the photo, no. Now the manufactured series, again, I flipped that on its head, and those are heavily edited. Right. Um, you know, really pushing that, those browns and reds, and and taking out the sky almost completely. So yeah, the the manufactured, heavily manufactured, and and these are, are less so. Awesome. Now, how would I contact you if I see a piece here I have to purchase, or maybe even commission you for? Some, uh, some work, how would I get in touch? My website would be the best way. It's uh, hiddencityimaging.com. Mm -hmm. um, again, the idea that you're working with an environment that's there in plain view, but hidden at the same time. Awesome. Uh, that's definitely the best way to reach me. Now, when I think of a, an artist, I sometimes think of, okay, is there an alter ego? Is there a different person? Like, this is the art, so this is the person by night. Who is Jonathan Scott by day? Uh, I think this is actually me by day. Okay. And then by night, I shoot uh, DJs um, and nightclubs. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So, are there any questions from our audience members that you have for uh, Mr. Scott? I think we've got time for about two questions. Absolutely. What Just make sure you speak up. Sure. What is your camera of choice? Uh, right now, the 5D Mark II, Canon 5D Mark II. It's a uh, full frame uh, digital SLR. Camera? I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> uh, it's it's big, big. Yeah. So are these awesome. are these the cameras you see with like the huge lenses? It's right Bam. there. Bam. There we go. That's Bam. the camera. She rocks too. Yes. Yeah. So have you have you ever thought about going into like uh, you know, like fast action uh, photojournalism or are you content? Are you do you branch out? I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not. I'm not, as far as fast action, mm -hmm. when it comes to sports, I don't feel like we need more pictures of athletes. <laughs> we already have 24 hours of Sports Center. I mean, really? I, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, at some point you have to make a living. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, it's not something that I'm drawn to. I, I much prefer the idea of finding uh, beauty that is there, but maybe hidden. Awesome. I think there was another question. Did you major in photography? I'm currently majoring in photography. So majoring. Yeah. Where? Uh, Heron School of Design. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Can Can I yeah, say thanks a, real quick? Yeah. I need sure. to thank my parents, awesome. who have been awesome. <laughs> they're, they're musical artists, and they've supported me uh, physically and emotionally and financially, and. Uh, yeah, I appreciate they're putting up with what seems to be my will not to get an undergrad degree. <laughs> <laughs> is it difficult to parent a, 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 a child that is so oh, artistically man. inclined and, and is, is rather, uh, uh, I would say, even steadfast, and this is what I'm going to do, just deal with it, mom and dad. How is that difficult? Well, the problem is that every time Jonathan took a course, 
course, the teacher would come to him afterwards and say, you must major in this. So what is this, your fourth and fifth major? <laughs> <laughs> so so you're good he started out in cello no, performance. No, no, no. So. Right. no, he's lying. He's lying. <laughs> right. Clearly. Clearly. He's being modest, and I appreciate it. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Thank you for showing your art. Thank sure. you for sharing your family. Uh, I encourage you, if you have any questions, and, and I hope that's okay. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, walk right up to him and ask him. I, he seems like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> if I could, just one note about working with Circle City. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I've chosen this organization is I think artists as, as a whole, uh, both young and old, we do a really bad job of marketing. Like, really bad. Uh, to the point where, uh, you know, funding for arting, arts uh, is being cut. And yeah. it's because we're not out there saying, hey, this is important. And get involved when you're young. You don't have to have an art degree to enjoy art. Um, you don't have to have a music major in order to enjoy music. So why would it be different for art? Um, so that's why, that's why I, I think this is really important. Awesome. Awesome. And well, we are glad that you think it's important. Yeah. We support you supporting us, supporting them. <laughs> so thank you guys. Uh, we'll start the concert in just a little bit. But if you do have any questions or comments or just want to tell him you love his work, uh, by all means, do so. And don't forget the diamond hunt. I believe there is still a half carat diamond available. Half carat? Five dollars for half carat diamond? That's the cheapest you're ever going to find one of those. If you find it, I mean, in the Diamond Hunt. So we'll, we'll uh, give you another announcement when we're ready for the concert. Thank you guys so much.